Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Opinion. I really do appreciate it. And with this episode, we are talking about Watchmen HBO 2019 series episode eight titled A God Walks Into a Bar. And what's funny to me is that's the title of the episode. And I really didn't catch on to this like the first two times I watched this. I did watch this twice. I just had to for reasons which I'm going to talk about. But I was just thinking the title meant A God Walks Into a Bar because majority of the episode they're in a bar you know but it actually says a bar like angela's last name like you know that i just thought that was interesting and i just realized that like 15 seconds before i hit record i was like oh that's quite clever i don't i don't know how that slipped my mind or just you know went over my head but you know i just wanted to note that real quick but guys if this is your first time finding me and you want more movie reviews trailer reactions from myself me responding to entertainment news or just more television recaps like this watchman hbo series please go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you can get all of my content also that bell so you'll be notified when i make uploads so let's go ahead and get into this guys i'm very excited like i said i saw this episode twice i almost watched it three times before um you know i wanted to record this video i just i don't know i just have to watch it more than once and still sometimes you know i miss things but i love this episode i really did it's one of the best ones of the season like seriously we only have like one episode left and like like i don't know what they was doing with the music especially towards the end of the episode with the piano keys where there was at the house and angela's just frustrated just like we don't stop cal or dr manhattan john you know we don't have time for this stop effing around you know and they're i don't know it was just beautiful what they was doing with this episode with at, at the very beginning of the episode you know with it going back in time just a little bit uh but at the end especially and I, i'm jumping around already but what they was doing with those piano keys and you know like i i thought it was beautiful like piano is just one of my favorite instruments like of all time you know i i love the sound of a piano and so i don't know i just had to talk about that real quick at, at the very beginning of this but like i said i love the episode guys and what yaya abdul maheen is doing as dr manhattan because we got that reveal at the end of the last episode i just thought the whole thing was great and if you've seen my past recaps y'all know how frustrated i was with this character just like oh my god they're making him a better male they're making him so weak you know he's not able to protect his woman he just seems so soft and look the joke's on me you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the joke is on me you know because this guy ends up being one of the most powerful people in the whole entire galaxy the whole entire universe of course he's not above the one above all the true guy you know what i'm saying the true capital gld you know uh but you know he's right under that or whatever and so one of the things i liked about it the most was right down the middle uh the first half of the episode like 30 30 it's about an hour long of course so you got about 30 35 minutes where they're in the bar and then at the second half that's when it switches over to i guess present day or present time and it's kind of interesting when we're talking about dr manhattan because he does and since the the con he, there's no concept for him as far as like time is concerned of like a moment before and after he he experienced time past a present and future simultaneously and so you know at the very beginning of the episode i'm really uh oh no i'm sorry it picks up uh at, at that half point where you know it's present day and she's like hey john wake up baby you know are you okay and she takes the device out of his head and he starts floating and that's when we actually get to see you know john dr manhattan cow and his full blue makeup his cgi you know being like a godlike figure and while the cgi and effects was not as tight as the Zack snyder movie i mean I, I wasn't expecting it to be it still looks great for an hbo series it's still convincing and i really do like the way um they decided to make you know his blue character his blue godlike form still look like a uh, cow still look like yaya uh madum nahin the second i i thought that was great and the way uh, he was glowing and flashing at certain points the way his eyes were white at certain points but then you know when he would you know tone his his glowing down to where it went to more of like a human element i liked all that and I, it was something i was worried about at the very beginning of this episode because you know when it starts out he's in the street we see his feet the camera pans down he picks up the blue mask and he puts it on his face i was just loving that too because the first half of the episode is just like a mystery you know and we're experiencing this somewhat from angela's perspective and she just annoyed you know what i'm saying but like john he is just really putting the mac down and i just like 
like the way that they they're teasing us because we don't see his face and i'm just getting frustrated like ah oh, pan the camera up i want to see his face but we just see like his neck down and like he's acting with his hands and you know doing this you know all these hand gestures and motions and things like that and it's like really speaking volumes and i really think this is just like clever it's not a film per se but you know clever filmmaking so i just got to give them uh that there but you know with miss regina king she was looking good with her straight hair I mean, y'all know I love my afros, too, and all that good stuff. But she was looking good with her straight hair and her uniform, just being annoyed. And Kyle just coming over there, just like, you know, hey, you know, you're commemorating the death, you know, the, the anniversary of your, your parents' death. And she just seemed so annoyed. And as she was smiling, like, not only, this was, another thing that made this episode so great was it was just funny. I was laughing my ass off, just rolling throughout this whole thing because she's so annoyed at the beginning. This random guy dressed in blue makeup with a black suit on coming on i'm dr man she's like the whole time she was just on some negro please you know mindset you know what i'm saying and that's just kind of funny to me but he was able to like like make her smile you know and i i, I really do just respect that just you know he was cool he was calm he was collected and he was confident you know and it's probably easier said than done because you know he is a god you know but at the same time you know that performance you know was just really great to me and you know i this episode right here answers so many questions and tied so many uh so many bowls and you know just got rid of all these loose ends and you know what we I, you know earlier if you saw my recaps you know one of the things that i was com uh, confused about was like why was there a giant squid you know or why is everybody talking about that and why they're you know squids falling down from the sky but we could finally get to see john uh, dr manhattan cal you know together in one of his laboratories you know ducked off somewhere um, you know in some certain sector corner you know in the world and you know he's manipulating everybody you know it's a farce you know he's just like oh you're still you know adrian you're still over here you know uh I, I forgot the exact phrase he used but you know manipulating the people you know uh, about some alien invasion he's like well i'm keeping the peace you know because i was always wondering like okay where when is you know i know this is um uh, Ozymandias, like, when is he going to tie into everything else, you know, and then, you know, we get to see it, you know, in this episode right here. But even at the very beginning of this episode, I just like the way, uh, you know, he was creating life. And, you know, it answered questions for me about, you know, he was on Europa, which is a moon on Jupiter, which is, you know, millions of light years away. And, you know, we thought that he was on Mars, but he was just saying, no, you know, I've been here the whole time. These devils are just pre-recordings, you know, like a computer program, you know, because I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. You know, I, I, I wanted to experience things. And the, the one of the things like I, I've seen the movie. And while I didn't like, the, I know the I know this show is not a sequel to the movie. It's a sequel to the graphic novel, and the movie is, uh, you know, of course, loosely based on the graphic novel. But of course, it still ties into the movie. I mean, that's obvious, you know. Um, and you know, one of the things in the movie is, you know, he completely you know, uh, lost his connection with humanity, you know, but in this series right here, you know, you can still tell that he is a human down to his core, uh, just a little bit. And, and just, especially with the way that he was communicating with Angela, you know, he was laughing a few times, you know, at the table with her also with Adrian. And, um, I, you know, I, I loved all of that, but initially I was, um, uh, you know, when they, she was talking about, well, if you did this, you know, um, she was asking about uh, Adam and Eve. And he was like, you know, well, Adam and Eve are fictional characters, but I actually did create life. And that's kind of like the way he went to, you know, his visual exposition on everything that he was uh, creating on Europa. And I just I thought that was interesting. And, um, you know, that made sense because, you know, where uh, Adrian or Ozymandias, how he was pulling the babies out of the water that comes from Dr. Manhattan. And at first I was like, wait a minute, why is he making even though, uh, you know, I mean, some of you, you know, uh, believe in Adam and Eve, some don't. I'm not going to get into that. But as far as the first humans on the planet, you know, we all know that they're black. But I was just saying to myself, OK, why are these creatures white? You know, but he was like, no, he, he didn't make them in his image. He made them off of uh, their image. And, you know, he is uh, John Osterman. 
And he, uh, the clones that we saw throughout this whole series were based on real people uh, from that uh, that giant, I forgot what it was called. It was started with an M, like um, the Manor House or something. I can't remember. You know, those real people that when John was in the closet, he, you know, he saw them having sex. You know, he was just kind of sending himself like, okay, in 1939, parents did not teach their children, you know, about sex or whatever. And so I was like, oh, okay, you know, this is where he gets the image from. This is where he modeled his uh, Adam, his uh, Adam and Eve per se from or whatever and so I just kind of like how they you know they tied that in and you know we kind of got like a little backstory uh with uh you know uh, his dad and you know just kind of just how he was raised and how he was brought up talking about how his dad he was able to fix a watch and you know how that's possibly the only thing that he was able to fix and you know all this is just connecting the dots for me just from all the previous episodes and also uh loosely tying in with the movie i i did not see the uh gra i mean i did not read the graphic novel I'm, I'm most likely um you know not going to do that but i just like i really like the way he was just talking to angela you know just calling her dubious and they're playing the guessing game and you know uh he was just like you know hey we're going to be together for 10 years but it's going to end in tragedy and we're going to have children and we're going to you know grow up and you know or we're going to be in Tulsa Oklahoma she's like what you know what's going on you know who who told you that how did you know this so you know and he just kind of like dropping jewels and another thing just funny to me he was like you know hey and your favorite song is going to play on the jukebox right now and she's just hilarious oh shit oh and I thought he really got it right she's like oh shit I've actually never heard this song before you know and she's still annoyed, but she's like entertained at the same time. And, you know, it, it's so entertaining for me because we still don't even see what this guy looks like. And I'm just kind of like salivating at the mouth, like pan the camera up. I want to see, you know, uh, you know what you look like or whatever. And um, another thing, it, it just kind of jumping um you know, towards the middle of the episode, when he's just talking to talking to Adrian in his laboratory, he's like, you know, Adrian is smart too. He's a genius, and one of, one of the things I will say that is somewhat slightly disappointing to me is I do I do wish we could see Jeremy Irons fight in this series, like Ozymandias, Adrian Vite or whatever. Because if you've seen the movie, you know that he's super smart. And you know that he's super strong and he can box his ass off. He can fight or whatever. Like, you, you, you're not going to beat him in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. You know what I mean? He whooped Warshak and all men, like, on, you know, two-on-one. And those two dudes can fight or whatever. I mean, he's just that big of a badass, you know. So that is one thing that we're really not getting in the show. But, I mean, hey, you know, nothing uh, nothing is perfect. But Adrian is able to see, like, oh, John, you know, you got a woman in you. You know, you're interested in this lady over here. You know what I'm saying? You know, who is she? You know, all that good stuff. And he and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this chick over here. And he really sees that John wants to be human or whatever or experienced in human life. One of the reasons why he's not on Mars and or Europa anymore, you know, but, um, you know, he was explaining to Adrian that, hey, I created this heaven over here. You know, would you like for me to send you there? And that just kind of ties in another thing, you know, and early in episodes, Adrian was like, you know, hey, you know, I thought this was a paradise early, but this is more of a prison. And, you know, he put the Mac down on him too, tricking him like, dude, you're just kind of causing too much chaos. Let me just go put you in time out over here. So you're not just like effing with everybody thinking, you know, you're like, you know, you're just doing too much or whatever. And so um, the Dr. Manhattan character is slightly different um, as the mindset as far as on the movie and opposed to the show. And I, again, I know this, this show is not a sequel to the movie, per se. It's more after the graphic novel. But I do like uh, the difference there. Also, let me go back a little bit. Uh, I really also was fascinated by, um, you know, the morgue when he chose the body and, uh, you know, the, you know, the reasons why he was like, I don't care what I look like, you know. And of course, this is after they decided to go on a date. Um, you know, she's like, unless these are not the only other options and you're hot enough from some reason. And she chose that black body. And there may have been another significant reason for that, that I'm not tying it into, uh, cause I did hear someone else kind of mention that, but I was like, no, I don't, I don't like watching or reading other people's reviews or recaps, you know, before I do mine. So if you have any more insight as to as um, as far as that's concerned, please let me know uh, down in the comment section. But his voice changed slightly when he went black body, Yahya Abdul Mahin II. He still sounded like him a little bit, you know, when he was the blue man, but he sounded like himself 
a whole bunch, you know, when he actually transformed or whatever. Now, uh, something in the middle of the episode did kind of frustrate me, too, because he was like six months from now. We're going to get into an argument. And that's when uh, they were, you know, having sex, making love in the bed or whatever. And, you know, she, you know, he was like, where are you right now? You know, she was on top of him doing her thing. She's like, I'm in the bar, you know, I'm by the bus. you know, I'm in the bar talking about this point. And, da, 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 da. and you know, they finished the climax, or whatever. And uh, she's like, we're not going to fight or whatever. And he's like, yes, you are. And then they end up getting to fight. I'm just kind of saying to myself, dude, will you just shut the hell up? Stop talking. I mean, you just you just did your thing or whatever. Let her relax. Go get some some water or y'all, whatever you got to do afterwards, whatever. Everybody do something different. You know, just just shut your mouth. He kept talking like, well, we're going to fight because of this and that. And you, you long for a relationship in the family because you didn't have one. And she's like, OK, you need to shut your ass up. I'm like, but thank you. Somebody's going. I'm like, dog, dude, just be quiet or whatever. You know, I know he's Mr. Inevitable, you know, or trying to be at least that things are going to happen no matter what. But that wasn't the best writing to me. I mean, they could have fleshed it out just a little bit more, you know, and didn't she ended up, you know, she ended up asking him to leave or whatever and he was naked and that's why he showed up you know naked at the uh the agent's crib or whatever you know in his birthday suit uh but i was just kind of like frustrated uh, uh, about that or whatever uh but something else uh something else that i did like is uh the scene to where you know he got he sent adrian to the to the moon uh europa you know he caught the little ring that he created and he was like i created this 90 years ago and he was explaining that talking about you know you're going to be yourself but you know I, I just like the whole explanation there he's like you know you won't be able to use your powers except it's for like on a reflex so when he actually came to at the 30, 35 minute mark where Angela uh, was like, you know, you know, he was like, hey, I'm, I'm I know yeah, I know this is frustrating for you right now, but I'm confused as to like where when am I or something like that? Because like, of course, you know, he experiences time, past, present and future all at the same time or whatever. And she just she said the F-bomb like 17 times in this episode uh, or whatever. But he sees the clock like, oh. You know, this clock is broken. You know, she's like, do you remember, you know, uh, how it happened? And they go to the flashback to where I was screaming before. And my recaps like, why didn't he help her when the seven cavalry, you know, tried to infiltrate the crib? And, you know, he's that one of the dudes dead. But however, she still was able to push him on the ground. And I'm just like, I pushed you to the ground and he shot. I'm like, bro, how, why was she able to push you to the ground so easy? And I, I don't know. I mean, th that was a little uh, that was like a little rocky, uh, you know, right there to me. But, you know, he's like walking on the pool and frustrated. And then the kids see him and he teleports her. I mean, the kids over to uh, to uh, the grandfather's house, you know, uh, Louis Gossett Jr. And she just frustrated. She like she just keeps saying like these F-bombs. And it's funny to me because I would be as frustrated as, you know, as she is, too. But the whole chicken and the egg thing was that whole paradox was interesting. I like I like. You know, like uh, I was just thinking to myself, especially the second time I watched this, just like, you know, I, I personally, I do believe in time travel. I mean, it's already been proven that it can happen in the 70s. Um, like they've proven that you can travel to the future, but they haven't proven that you can travel to the past. And now y'all may be looking at me like, B, what the hell are you talking about? I mean, like they've it can happen if you're able to create a type of device or vehicle um that can travel at a certain speed uh you can travel to the future i i can explain it um i actually i started getting into that uh even more uh when i saw the movie interstellar with uh christopher nolan and all them and like i was so fascinated by that movie like i, I would just like i would just study 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 and i i really finally understood the concept or whatever because it's based off of gravity and movement, you know, like when astronauts are like in space, they uh, experience time different than we do. Like they they age slower because they're in a different gravitational pool. I, I know I'm like way off topic, you know, right here. But that's just another reason why I, I like this episode, because uh, uh, he was just talking about the experience of time. Um, you know, when he was talking to um, to uh, Mr. Reeves, her grandfather, while he was talking to her simultaneously at the pool. And then, you know, she, we find out that she is the reason why um, he found out about Don Johnson's character, uh, you know, about the Klan robe and the Cyclops thing. But both of those things happen at the same time. And that's that that concept of time is confusing as hell to me. Uh, 
I'm just like, what? It, it just, it's really hard for my for me to wrap my head around, you know, and he is the, you know, John uh, Cal, Dr. Manhattan is the reason for that or whatever, you know, but as he's as he's giving his exposition, he's like, oh, I'm hungry. And he goes and starts trying to make waffles. I'm like, bro, you are so random. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? And he's like, watch out for the eggs. And just like, John, she throws the eggs down, like, stop effing around, dude. Like, these people are trying to kill you or whatever. And then this is where, you know, where we get to the climax of the episode right here to where he was like, you know, this is where I'm in love. It's like, these people out here trying to kill you. And she goes out there and looks outside and sees them. And she's like, nah, but we ain't finna go out like that. We finna, if we're going to go, we're going to go out swinging. You know what I'm saying? Nah, uh-uh. If, if this is the tragedy you're talking about 10 years from now, no, 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 no. I'm going to go out there and save you or whatever. And I'm just, at first I was like, bro, you a God now? You still going to let the woman lead like this? I mean, I like a strong woman, but come on, bro. All you got to do is zap they dumb masters. Zap your white supremacist ass. You know what I'm saying? But I like, you know, I like, she was like, I'm finna go. It, I don't know. It was just dope. Like, man, it, it just, I, I love Angela's character. It, it's, it's, it, it, she is what that is. You know what I'm like? I, it's, I don't know. It would just, man, like, it, it's some stuff, you know, like a lot of, well, not gonna say a lot of women, but a, a number of women think that men want, oh, everybody wants something, something different. Like, men want this, men want that, men like this, men like that, da 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 da. Yeah, we may like all those things. But it's not, a lot of times it just be like these little things that y'all don't even realize that just make us weak in the knees. And just she was just like, I'm finna go out there and save your ass. I was just like, ooh, that 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 I don't know. It, it really did something for me. Not in like a sexual uh, way or anything like that, but it just you know, you know, just like man, I love you too, and you are a fictional character. I'm much. I love you too. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it was just dope to me. And she just was fearless, man. She just went out there and just was racking heads, just blowing them off, just like, uh, 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 Matrix style. And then, you know, when she thought it was over, dude just showed up there, oh, Dr. Manhattan, just zap your dumb ass, zap your dumb ass, zap your dumb ass. I'm just like, yeah. And she kind of got like an extra, you know, boost of confidence. You know, and she's, uh, you know, got back up and like they were just teaming up. And he just zapping people, stopping bullets, and she's over here. I'm just like, this. and then they got the pianos playing, and so I'm like, mm, you know what I'm saying? This is, oh, I'm loving this, you know. It was, it was just dope. I, I was like, I was, I was into it, man. I, I was really, I was really, really feeling it or whatever. I was really excited just, just sitting there, just like, yeah, this is what's up, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was nice, but. Another thing that frustrated me, she was she was so relieved. She was like, "We want you, we won." You know, you was wrong. He was like, "No, Angela." You know, and I'm like, "Bro, if you know the dude is behind you, zap his dumb ass." You know, I I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Like, you could have gotten out of that, you know, or they could have written it a better way to where it really was inevitable. Because if y'all seen the movie The Matrix Reloaded, which most of you have, if you haven't, spoilers coming. It was Matrix 2, the second one. Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, of course, was like, he saw the future or a glimpse of it. And he was like, okay, we're going to be okay. Or maybe it was the third one, makes his revolutions. He was like, just don't go into the Matrix. Everything will be okay. Just don't enter the Matrix. She's like, okay, cool. I'm not going to enter the Matrix. But she realized, looking on the outside in, that she had no choice but to enter the Matrix because if they open that door, game over. Everybody was going to blow up. That made sense. That was an inev inevitable, in inevitable feat. It was going to happen no matter what. It wasn't written that well in this episode right here because I'm like, like, bruh, you know, like, you know. And he still shouldn't have been shot with that, you know, was it Tekion Particle Cannon? Because, bro, you, you're able to, well, I mean, I was going to say he's able to see everything, but at the same time, you know, his vision was warped a bit because, you know, he was still confused because the thing was taken out. But I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see. But there's some things that I want to know is where the hell is Looking Glass? Where is Looking Glass at? I hope he comes through in the end and and you know helps out. Um, it looks like the senator is going to be getting the. If you saw the preview for the next episode, like the senator is going to be getting the powers of Doctor Manhattan. Also, I'm really wondering what the hell this uh, Millennium Clock is going to do. And also, the last thing, if y'all saw the post credit scene, they were smashing the tomatoes in the face. Why was Adrian Ozymandias so damn happy about a horseshoe? Why was he so happy about a goddamn horseshoe? We're just going to have to see, guys. We're just going to have to see. But y'all, I love this episode. That is just my opinion. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I know some of y'all were like, where the hell is your Watchmen review? Seriously, guys. 
Uh, this is I saw it Sunday, but this was actually the earliest that I could get you the review with everything else I got going on. Uh, but I'm going to try to get y'all the last episode the night of. Uh, but again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help me reach 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm trying to start out 2020 with 20,000 subscribers. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. You got links in the description box and the pinned comments. All you got to do is just click on the link and then click on the follow button and you help me boy out. At least help me reach 1,000 followers on Instagram. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget to always chase your dreams because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.